Yeah, take a deep breath. <laughs> All right, we're back. Episode 38. Uh, Browns is still Browns. Maybe we could call it. Columbo's Man. mad. I I gotta say, I uh, my my only my only comment on last night's game was, and I don't even care that they lost. Right? I mean, I'm a Steelers fan by mere approximation to where I grew up. I don't you really love have them any so much. You love them. <laughs> it's so clear. But, You're so sad. <laughs> but the worst part of the game, I don't even care they lost. It's just no fun to watch. I mean, for for unless you're, I mean, a Browns fan, obviously. I had but like, a lot of I don't even care they lost, but I, I would have watched, I, I would have preferred a much more interesting game. <laughs> but man, in retrospect, I, I said this to my coworker before I left the office today. In retrospect, that in, that first snap going like 10 miles over Ben's head <laughs> is so funny. Yeah. If you just like go back and watch it, it's, it's like so comedic. He already looks goofy as hell in the pocket just generally chasing down a errant ball not a good look for him but the, but the ball trajectory out of the ass of marquise pouncey was like it shot out of a cannon <laughs> yeah like it, it, was, even, it wasn't like, close <laughs> it wasn't even close it was like it, it was like a long snap almost yeah the the it's recovery crazy, attempt crazy. was equally hilarious because they <laughs> like they weren't even close to it i mean but like a, a more bad news bears scenario you could not conjure up just play one down number one of the game, just complete chaos. Right Twenty-eight out of the straight shoot. points. Twenty-eight straight points in the all in the first quarter, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you have to say to the haters, Keith? Oh, the only I'd say the biggest bummer for me was that it wasn't a packed house because I would love to see a pan around of all their faces. Oh, yes. Because it doesn't matter if you're the Steelers or just any team in the NFL. When you're losing to the Browns, the look on the fans' faces is just like they can't believe it's happening. <laughs> So to see that happen to the Steelers faithful um, in a playoff game would have been a, a real treat. I like to think that uh, their downfall okay. began when they lost to the Bengals on Monday Night Football. So I do want to take partial credit for this win, if you don't mind, Keith. I, I actually that. have no problem with that. It took okay. them down a peg or two. Okay, great. So it's like <laughs> it's kind of like we both won a playoff game, if you think about it. 60-40. Mm, <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, that's a good ratio, I think. That's fair. Um. But now that we're done uh, owning Colombo, uh, here's a question. Uh, between, I guess, college NFL postseason, who's the bigger horse's ass, Dabo or Juju? Doo-doo shit poopster. I heard that today. I fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Um, I mean, I would. I mean, I think that I think you got to give the nod to Dabo because he's kind of like that. His shtick is holier than thou. You right. would you would give the nod to Dabo over your boy, your best friend Doo Doo. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's a very funny one. I do enjoy that. If... But yeah, Dabo is very much a high ground guy. It was kind of weird to see him just like blatantly talking shit, like that interview when he refused to refer to them as anything other than the five win team, <clears> and then <throat> put them behind Coastal Carolina in the rankings, and then just got slapped in the playoff game. Not a good look. Well and and I am and I am by no stretch of the imagination a like uh, speak softly and carry a big stick type of guy. Like I like a little bit of boasting. I think it's fun. You're like, a Roosevelt fella, right? Yeah. Uh, but you know, could you forecast anything more easily than someone talking giant shit like that and then just getting worked over? I mean, it it's like it's like guaranteeing that that's going to happen when you do that. Yeah, I mean, I was almost certain that Clemson was going to roll in that game. And then I heard Dabo talking shit, and I'm like, well, now Ohio State's going to win. No, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I don't... Do active coaches always just release their idea of the rankings? Like, what, what is that about? I don't know if that's a common thing or not. Because I, I was, thought it was kind of weird, too, when I saw it. Like, oh, Dabo puts Ohio State at 11. I was like, why the fuck does he get to say what the fucking rankings are? Who <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. I mean, there's like a coach's just... poll, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know if that was public or not, but that was that's pretty egregious. And yeah, that's that's sweet victory for Ohio State. Like that, that's easy money when someone goes against you like that. Yeah, just like Have I'm, I, uh... I'm going to give the nod to Dudu though, because well, I experienced it with the Bengals game on Monday night. We haven't even recorded a podcast since then, but we just utterly surprised them Monday Night Football and. 
he danced on the logo before the game and then just got fucking crushed, just destroyed on their first series, fumbled the ball. Uh, the Bengals never looked back and just won the game. That was so satisfying. It fucking ruled. Yeah. Columbo, what you got? Uh, nothing. I, I was getting ready to switch topics. I, I didn't know if we were talking football. I was going to say, I don't think I've seen you guys since Christmas. Have we? Have yeah. We, done well. we were going to do a Christmas episode, but it just got too busy. Did yeah. Santa bring you guys everything you wanted? Month. <laughs> um, we're obviously out of practice here. Um, yes, I think so. My mom got me the underwear and so- socks and undershirts that she always gets me. That's I can always count on that, and that's great because I'm always out of underwear and socks and undershirts come uh, Christmas time. So it's very much appreciated. I love putting on a fresh pair of underwear, socks, and undershirt combo. Um, you know, like the very next day after Christmas, I feel very clean and nice and new. So um, that was nice. Those were my only three gifts this year. I was a bad boy. I got uh, socks as well and house slippers, both of which I'm wearing right now, and I feel fantastic. That's that's tremendous. House that's slippers tremendous. are the move. I, I'm wearing house slippers right now. I have like four different pairs, all in like varying conditions. Some of them I'm like, all right, this is a last resort. Columbo, would you get a third world country? I... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, an emerald mine no, in Ghana. I, I will say this though: <laughs> Christmas at my house has always been an an absolutely gluttonous <laughs> affair when it no. comes to gifts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this it, it usually it usually works its way out. Like now that I'm like an adult or whatever, that at least for the last three years, my parents have gotten myself and my girlfriend like a joint gift that's like more adult, like something you need in your life, not necessarily the uh, socks t-shirt deal. Last year. I, I can't believe last I year, up socks and underwear and t-shirts now. God damn it. Okay, go ahead. Last year, uh, it was a fence. Um, Ooh, that's a nice kid. My place, my place needed a new fence, so they, they got us a fence. Uh, and then this year, it was like I had – uh, I'm doing like the classic um, New Year's Eve or, or New Year resolution thing. And I now have like a uh, nutritionist and like a dietitian. I'm on this like program now. Me and my girlfriend at the same time. That was our gift this year. Oh, is that like a six month thing or yearly thing? It's This one's three. Hold on one second. I'm going to yell at my dog. Enzo. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Uh trying to eat my like soil in my plant um (laughs) dogs are so yeah they really are but yeah that's our thing today was day one it was a real shit show i had to get up at uh 5 15 this morning so that i could make it to the gym by six fuck uh it was it was awful so they do everything for you they tell you what you're gonna do at the gym they They, tell you what you're gonna eat they literally control your life basically do they get you the food that's the only thing they don't do is okay. uh, like go to the store and buy it for you and cook it. I mean, you have to cook it yourself, but I have every single meal like planned out down to the uh, microgram of how much of it, mo- like breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, damn, all the way through. And my workouts planned seven days a week. Wow, which seven is kind of nice because it it does, it does or six days a week for the workouts. Sundays are days off, but it does kind of it is kind of nice on a on a sincere note to take the burden off your shoulders of even like thinking about it a little bit. You just do it. Yeah. You got people driving you basically. Yeah, pretty much. And that sounds so sick. that was, that was actually, that was actually a great gift. Um, I talked about doing it. And when my, I talked to my mom on the phone before Christmas and she was like, when you said that you want to do that training thing, like, were you serious? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, all right, that can be your gift this year. I'm like, all right, chill. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if that would be like a surprise gift because if you know my mom got me that I'd I'd probably ask where the socks and underwear were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, I got a a rack of fresh socks. I'm pretty pumped about that. You, you get I, dress uh, socks? Oh, you don't do dress socks. You're you're a weirdo who wears your Nike fucking socks underneath your dress shoes. You know, I'm a comfy socks guy. Yeah. Have I told you guys my the all time since since everyone 
is going to do the third world country joke, like the all time, like coolest Christmas gift I ever got. I'm sure that I can't imagine. Wait, I think we did a six pack of Christmas gifts. Was this the like, I, the, was this the bike? Like the, yeah, the dirt bike, the dirt bike. <laughs> Yeah, my I, I my J my James Dean ass. I I you couldn't. That's the most confident I've ever been. I was like nine, just cruising around the cul-de-sac. I had a motorcycle. I went to this girl. There was a middle school birthday party, and in a girl in my neighborhood, and I went to it on my motorcycle. Yeah, that is so many years scooping ladies on the motorcycle. At, at at age ten or eleven, that's about as cool as it gets. That's as cool as you'll ever be. No offense. Pretty You're much. pretty cool. But like that's... I appreciate that. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh it was quite the quite the show. Speaking of uh eating and working out, obviously I I've, I haven't started working out, but I've decided that I'm like addicted to take out food now. It's a fucking nightmare, man. Cuz I was like between houses, you know, cuz I moved. I already you guys know that. The l- listeners probably know that, but not having like a fridge or like a place to stay and oh. just like living in the shell of a house for two weeks and then the shell of a house for two more weeks after I moved. Dude, I settle into the takeout life so quickly. Oh my God. Oh man. I, like, I love to, I love to cook, but that one time you just kind of throw in the white towel and you're like, yeah, we'll order out. My, like, my brain oh. tricks me. Like I'll be like, I'll order. I've, there were days where I ordered lunch and I'm getting like a huge burrito from like a nice Mexican place. And then I'm like, yeah, I'll make something for dinner. Like, I think I have like some spinach in the fridge or whatever. And then like three hours later, I'm just like, well, I got El Vaquero for lunch, so I should probably get a, uh, I don't know. Can I get Taco Bell for dinner? And like my brain tricks me. <laughs> Keep with the Mexican theme. <laughs> I don't want to put on airs. I might as well go to Taco well, Bell this time. <laughs> If I mix, yeah, like if I mix uh, ethnic foods, my stump, my tummy's probably going to be a little upset. So I should get Taco Bell for dinner too. But like, it, yeah, I've gotten works. in this groove. I made dinner tonight for the first time in like three weeks, and I feel like an utter piece of shit of a human being. So, Dude, and and obviously this is a tale as old as time, but it's so expensive. It's so expensive. It just, it's insane. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's twenty dollars for an average, like low level DoorDash order. Oh my god, yeah. If I spend, if all I spend on like Uber Eats or DoorDash is twenty bucks, I'm like, Phew, look at me. I'm like uh, the guy on like uh, CNBC. The other problem is I moved. For, I only moved like twenty minutes from my old house, but I didn't have all these DoorDash options over there. So like, I moved here and I'm like, oh shit, dude, I can get Piata here. I'll just get, I'll eat that six times a week. That is one of the all time worst restaurants of all yeah. time. Oh, here comes good. Italian guy. It's just that. Oh yeah. Okay. It's, I get it. It's it, no, and, I, and I'm a big, I, I've said this for years, but every new restaurant in Columbus, every like, like fast casual restaurant in Columbus can be just summarized in the question. You just walk up and they go bowl or wrap every single one. Well, here's a question for the Italian man. Uh, it's such a hilarious, like, Say Italian again. street food or whatever. Isn't that what you they label out, themselves? You cut out a little bit there, Keith. Yeah. Repeat that. It's like, it's such an obnoxious carb overload. So don't they oh, brand yeah. themselves as like uh, Italian street food or whatever? Yeah. Is it a common <laughs> in an Italian street food game to just put noodles inside a burrito? Because that's what I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will just be sleeping in the streets in Italy. Like yeah, you have to imagine. Yeah. It's no wonder they're so lazy. They're like carbo loaded to the absolute hilt. Yeah. The only thing you can do is drink espresso and smoke Marlboro Reds to kind of burn it off. Yeah. yeah. Come back down to earth a little bit. <laughs> that sounds so nice to me right now. I'd love to eat at one of those burritos right now. I just had dinner, dude. I'm. I'd probably gain twenty pounds through this entire fucking thing. It's such a funny feeling. Oh. Like you take a bite and you're like, "Man, this is good." And then you look down and it's just noodles spilling out of a burrito, and you're like, "What am I doing?" <laughs> it's like the, the one of the dishes on like Elf. Yeah, that he makes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, those uh, those piata sticks. I don't know. We're probably talking about shit that these listeners haven't even eaten. But the piata sticks are like 1,200 calories. Yeah, they're insane. 
And they're so fucking good. Dude. But you don't go to Piata and not get one. <laughs> you can't leave without a side. You don't. You need a little variety. You can't just have a fucking uh, noodle burrito. Yeah, let's mix it up. What? Well, where does that stand with the West Virginia stick? Uh, I've had. It's not. Even, I mean, it's not even in the same ballpark. <laughs> Colombo, what's it's your? Not spread? even in the same. What's your spread like on Christmas? Your family do Italians, Italian food? You know, so <laughs> uh, growing up, so my grandmother, my mom's or my dad's mother was Slovakian. And so my, <laughs> I, I never, it never really dawned on me until she passed away. But like every Christmas Eve, we would, because that's in my family, Christmas Eve is really the day. The Christmas day is like, a uh, two or three hour event in the morning while you're opening gifts or whatever. And yeah. then that's pretty much it. Um, but Christmas Eve, we would do like a full spread of like Slovak dishes. And then it dawned on me that really it was like my family's way of like giving her, her like 15 minutes to shine like okay. for her food. She, they just like bombarded this poor Slovakian woman with like lasagna and spaghetti and meatballs and hoagies and pizzas for 364 days a year. And, and on uh new year's, or on uh, Christmas Eve, they go, yeah, yeah, you can have some like uh, sauerkraut or whatever it is you like. What What is this? We'll Slovakian? Is it just like dough, sauerkraut, sausage, like potatoes? Lots of like pierogies, potatoes, things like that. That sounds good too. Though. I'm into that too. It, it's it's really good. It's like one of my favorite meals of the year, but we don't have it very often. I'm so hungry all the goddamn time now. <laughs> I have a problem. I have a serious problem. Well, your brain's immediately going to the DoorDash. It, instead of thinking what I'm going to eat, it's like, where am I going to order from? It's sad. <laughs> but the, uh, I know right. you asked us, <laughs> Keith, Me? about our Christmases, and then yep. we just kind of meander and change the subject. Tell us about yours, buddy. Uh, mine was pretty chill. I mean, your your standard COVID Christmas, I guess. But um, it was fun. I got I got my socks secured. Good there. Um, here's a funny uh, developing story, I guess. Uh, I think I'm a LARPer now. I'm a LARP guy. What are you LARPing as? Uh, I haven't fully developed my character just yet. But Columbo, you're going to love this. This is right up your medieval alley, buddy. Um, so when I watched, like, uh, like when Game of Thrones was doing its thing, there's a certain... There's a couple items on there that you're like, that's a sharp look. I think I could rock that. <laughs> Never thought that, but okay. Oh, I'm talking casual wear here. So, like, uh, you know, they have, like, the... It's basically a Henley, but, like, thread instead of buttons. You're not really speaking my language here. So, I'm rocking one of those, and then got the the pants that they're, like, casual, like, sweats, but they kind of tie it down the side along the leg. Rocking those for a bit. You're, it's like cowboy gear. It sounds like you're describing a cowboy. No, I'm more like a a medieval commoner of sorts. Okay. What what geography are we talking about here? You're talking about like Britain, sure. the British Isles, okay, Europe. And so I anyway, I'm rocking this, and I kind of walked by like the full length mirror and caught a look at myself. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I look like I could be in the LARP gang. So uh, started perusing the. Uh... Did he cut out for you guys? No, Me? I could hear him. I can hear him. So started perusing the local LARP community Reddit. Let them know I'm gang. Okay. Can and you guys not... hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Don't talk anymore. <laughs> They're not really doing anything right now because the COVID's. But as soon as it fires back up, uh, I might I might hop on board see what's going on. Okay. There's some meetups or something going on there. I would think. But well, also uh, for Christmas I got a nice tunic, so probably rock that over what I already got feel out my character a little bit okay are there specific larp communities or is it just kind of one broad group i don't know i'm still learning I'm, I'm new to the game okay you need to affect an accent of some sort i would think i don't think you can, you're you're gonna get made fun of if you go on with a mid-atlantic american accent i think well here's my thing is what are they gonna do if i just roll in day one and just be like hey i'm the king <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not, uh, dude. No, you're not. Stop saying that. I'm yeah, the king now, like, and you're like, the peasants. They have to play along. Yeah, I'll be like, well, we already have a king. All right, well, fucking put him on notice. I'm here. I killed him. He's dead now. Just go up and whack him with a foam sword. All right, <laughs> yeah. 
I summon him. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what these larpers are about. Um, there's a part of me that thinks there's probably a sexual aspect to it. Um, there has to be. There are always there is. Yeah. It's not that for me currently, but could be a developing story. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Sex in the middle e- the Middle Ages probably sucked. It was probably stinky. I would imagine it was, yeah, not very hygienic. Yeah. I mean, have you ever had sex after, like, a long day? Me neither, but I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine can having you a imagine? long day? <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you get know. home. <laughs> this was great to come back to. <laughs> Your balls are sweaty. You come across a, a lustful tavern wench. And you guys have some conversation and then before you know it buddy you're just having sex, having sex. <laughs> it smells like vinegar <laughs> speaking of that it's very funny that you're on this topic because i just got back from harry potter world oh my god oh, you didn't i did yes i was there this past weekend you have a wand no i didn't get one. Oh, you got to oh. get the wand when you go so you guys have been there no, no. Oh. <laughs> I don't just, even like Harry up. Potter, but if I went there, I would get a wand for sure. So I am a I am not a Harry Potter guy. I never have been. I didn't grow up with it. I didn't read it. I didn't watch it. I have since, because my girlfriend is such a big fan, in my adult years, watched it and have enjoyed it, you know, as much as I can at almost 30. Um, but I will say this. Dude, the Harry Harry Potter world absolutely rocks. It looks it's so cool. It's so cool. I've it, heard it's very immersive. It, it's insane. They got a real ass train, a full ass train <laughs> that you get That's on, sick. and they it's it's pretty tight. I yeah. love theme parks, dude. I, I don't give theme parks enough credit as like a good destiny, like a weekend trip type thing. I hate theme parks. I hate all parks. Same. Anything, I anytime, anything I have to wait in a line for, I'd rather not do. Yeah, as the I don't guy know. who pumps five dollars a gas at a time, I feel like that's something you'd hate. You know, it's very funny. I because I, I thought about this because uh, now, thankfully, because of COVID and like the holidays, wait times were down. So, like the longest I think I ever waited for a ride was right about an hour, which I've been noticing these days flies by. Like an hour to me is like five minutes. Hmm. As a child, I would have never been able to stand there and for an hour, but it didn't bother me. But anyways. It's a very rad place. Are you guys roller coaster guys? No, because of the line. Yeah, same. Because of the line. I enjoy yeah. the roller coaster, but I'm not willing to wait for it. There were there were some. Uh, it is very funny because I grew up in a Disney family. Like we went to Disney World a lot, and uh, never Universal. That was like because that's like the more adult side of the park. Like the rides are a little bit more like aggressive and. The movies aren't kids' movies that they're themed off of, but it's also very funny to see like the movies that they chose at the time to like invest a lot of money in and rides. There's yeah. a there's a there's a big time ride like that. The hour the wait time at, at peak season is like several hours for. It's the Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the yeah. dumbest movie of all time to ever get a ride. Yeah, you can you can go. There's a Jimmy Fallon themed ride. What? What yeah. is that? Jimmy just, Fallon's race just, through New York. I didn't you do just it. But. Get on a roller coaster cart and laugh at your own jokes for ten. I was minutes. gonna say, yeah, you just get laughed you, at. You get on a roller coaster and uh, ruffle Trump's hair. There's a <laughs> there's like a cr- crazy like uh, stunt show that we went to that's like born identity themed, but all of these like just stale enough movies. Yeah, speaking uh, of, I, I watched Con Air for the first time the other day. It's the on Netflix. Time? Now. I thought about watching it. Oh. I can't think of a movie that's been like on cable television more than that movie. Yeah, I always missed it or like I turned it on and turned it off, but um pretty pretty badass movie. Also, I was thinking in in this era of like wokeness, um not to like <laughs> I sound like a curmud- curmudgeon when I say that, but a uh, very great uh queer representation in that movie. There's just uh an inmate who's you, you know, watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. I don't want to talk about Con Air anymore. 
All right. Anyway, uh, you mentioned uh, things being COVIDed, things where like normally you'd have to wait in line for a long time. Uh, the Shroy like to apologize to him publicly. We had a uh, we were gonna go to Mad River snowboard place and figured you'd be on and off the lifts in no time because there's like a limit to how many people can go in. <laughs> Unrelated. Uh, the Shroy was talking about you know uh, the Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where Leon has to pretend he has Crohn's. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, for a while, uh, everything's tasted like peaches. Because he has no idea what Crohn's is. <laughs> oh, that, that's the one where he dresses up like the Muslim guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Michael Richards. Yeah, and we're talking about COVID. The and, doctor. Yeah, and Shroy has had it. And uh, I was like, oh, like, did you have, you know, what symptoms? Because everybody has, like, a sliding scale of different symptoms and stuff. And, like, was it a taste and smell thing? Was it a respiratory thing? And he's like, no, I don't have anything like that. Um, I just, like, I forgot how to read. <laughs> What? <laughs> that was his COVID symptom. <laughs> he didn't so, have COVID. He has fuck. He's a fucking idiot. That's what I said. It, you know, it's very funny. Uh, so I had some COVID after symptoms. I now have an inhaler, um, like a oh, nerd. Wow. Um, but there, my coworker was like describing his, and he's like, wasn't ever like super freaked out about COVID, but was like very villain. Uh, diligent about like researching it and figuring out like all the ins and outs of it and yada yada. Yeah. And and he had been experiencing some like what he deemed to be uh COVID like post like recovery symptoms or whatever. Mine was like I just couldn't had a hard time catching my breath. Like I wasn't actually running out of breath. It just felt like I was. Um and his was he described it to me and I still don't think that there's any way that this is actually what happened. And he's like yeah, like I get um, spooked a lot more easily now. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, like if something's in my periphery now, I'll just be like, Whoop! like anything. Like I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, absolutely not. This is like textbook psychosis. There's no, <laughs> you, 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 I mean, you go to the urgent care, you'd be like, yeah, man, I've really been, I've been spooked a lot lately. <laughs> things, in my, things in my periphery are like, uh, uh, uh. The COVID very, aftermath makes you a little jumpy. <laughs> I'm very scared all the time now. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I hadn't heard of uh, either of those kind of neurological symptoms, but that's good to know. Well, he was like, I was reading on, he's, he said, uh, I was reading on some Facebook group about it. I'm like, listen, pal, if you're, if you're on to Facebook groups about COVID post symptoms, you've already lost the fight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's, uh, that runs the gamut pretty much, right? Well, I mean, it's it's like anything. Everybody, they they you know like, it's like a, my toe hurts. My toe hurts, and I, I take a bad shit or something, and now all of a sudden it's a COVID after something. Right, right. Mm. Um, well, do you want to dive into what we've been watching or listening to? I actually have dose segments. I have a uh, a subtle a subtle this, and also a what do you guys think? You want to go into those now, or you want to do movies, TV, and stuff? I wanted I've... to put a ribbon on my con air real quick, okay? Because there's an inmate there, and I'm kind of going to dance around these words because, like, um, I, I don't want to sound offensive. I, I really mean this. I thought, like, mid-'90s Nicolas Cage blockbuster movie, like, you know, a guy in a dress is going to basically be a punchline. But do, do you remember that character? It's, just, it's a black guy who, like, is obviously femme or maybe he goes by she whatever but as soon as he gets out of the plane i'll say she like puts on a dress and like nobody really acknowledges it and like nobody makes fun of her or anything like that she's just a character i thought that was like looking at 90s movies i thought that was incredible like in like so off the what i would expect i don't remember that character at all i do want to watch it you gotta watch that rules i uh Hulu recently added a '90s segment to their like, uh, you know, like lists or whatever. Like it's a topic that you can sort by. Um, so I watched Con Air is one of the movies it suggested, but I watched Indecent Proposal the other night. Yeah, one of the straight up dumbest movies of all time. <laughs> is that Michael Douglas? No, no, no. That's uh, you're thinking of um. Ah, shit. Uh, Fatal Attraction. Okay, and Basic Instinct. Yes, okay. Basic Instinct, All three of these movies are the same. Well, 
I will say a couple, a couple of things, and I'm interested in your all's take on this because the the film landscape. I mean, it's not that any, it's not that people th are saying it stayed the same, but one marked difference that I've noticed is that um, the '90s they were just movies about stories. Like the like when the people got together to make the movie, they're like, "What's a story that people would be interested in?" Like, uh, uh what should we call it? Um, Fatal Attraction is a perfect example of that. Like, it's just a story. It's not topical. It's not, like, meant to serve any type of purpose or send any kind of, make any kind of point. It's just like, here's an interesting story you might be, com that might compel you. So, and Decent Proposal is about, like, a millionaire, billionaire who, want, who wants to fuck this guy's wife, right? Correct. Demi okay. Moore. It's it's Demi Moore and, um, shoot, uh, 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 Woody. Oh, yeah. Smoke show. Does she show milkers? Uh, I don't think so. Not that I recall. Side profile. I mean, you just watched it. I think you would remember. The yeah, I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. You close but your eyes. You close your I, eyes during I, those scenes. In fairness, I I didn't. I didn't. I stopped watching it because it was so stupid. <laughs> okay. Uh, I with like fifteen minutes to go. That's the mark of a really stupid movie. If you can't even hang on like fifteen wow. minutes to say like I gotta figure out how this ends, but it it just is like. Have you guys seen that movie? No. I have not either. So a brief plot synopsis is Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore are married. They're having financial troubles. Their house is getting ready to be like repossessed or something. And then they go and get a loan from Woody Harrelson's dad for like $5,000. And then like they just randomly decide that they're going to take that money and go to Vegas and try to turn it into – the amount of money they need uh to pay off the like overdue loan or whatever sure they need they have five they need to they need 50 Smart. but but they go to vegas and in the movie kind of pitches the idea of taking your last bottom dollar to vegas as like a like almost in like kind of a you know what we're you know that old thing that people do kind of like it's so bizarre that that's what they decide to do with the money, and there's no exposition about it at all. It's like, a pretty common trope, right? Is it? Yeah, like betting it all to win exactly what you need. Like, well, I guess what I'm saying is, is like the idea of like like being in Vegas and losing all your money is certainly a trope, but taking your last dollars to Vegas specifically to blow it is like such a strange thing, unless that's a trope I'm unaware of. No, oh, I I think I've seen that like a hundred times. I don't know. They pitched it in the movie like it's a Are common they... thing, so it must be. Anyways, yeah. dumbest movie you've ever seen. Uh, he's like, "I'll pay you a million dollars to have to sleep with your wife," and they look <laughs> at each other and they're like, "Okay." And then, <laughs> predictably, uh, Woody Harrelson's character like basically slowly yeah. starts losing his mind over whether or not like like. Who who exactly agreed to the idea? Like, was it her? Was it him? Like, okay. he starts thinking that she agreed because she doesn't want him anymore, and like, he starts like losing his mind about it. Like, Quizner's like, was he good in bed? Like, blah blah blah, like crazy. I don't know. This is just a stupid ass movie. Okay, so I shouldn't watch it. No, I, I did watch. It. I followed it up with uh, Frozen, though, not the children's movie. Oh, the uh, ski lift. Yes, yes, the movie rocks. It, uh, they're like trapped on a ski lift or something. It, it's honestly not bad. Hmm. Yeah, Th those movies have to be like kind of creative because I assume most of it takes place. The entire movie takes place basically on that ski lift, right? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Yeah those those movies you have to be a little creative to make them good. A, a good one like that is buried. Uh, I think it's called Buried with uh, Ryan Reynolds. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, where he's in the box. Yeah, he's just in like a casket the entire movie, and it's like an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, that movie sucks. But uh, <laughs> what's the one with uh, Tom Hardy in the car? That one's pretty good. Mad Max. No, you know what I'm talking about. He like he like cheated on his wife or something. He's just driving the whole time. Let me look it up because that one rules. It was the, only... uh, the dark. The Dark Knight Rises. God. Uh, let me see here. God, he's in so many fucking movies. What's Lock. It, uh... Lock was the movie. He's in like the trunk of a car? No. God damn it. I've never seen the fucking movie. Uh, that 
that Frozen movie though is did you I liked it. Did you like it? Yeah, it's it's good. I think I saw it on Netflix like some years ago and thought it was quite entertaining. They made a lot they made out of a lot out of a little a little in that movie. That movie is like objectively bad. Well, what are you watching then, smart guy? Uh, speaking of Las Vegas and Nicolas Cage, I watched Leaving Las Vegas. You guys ever seen that? No. No. Oh, it rules. <laughs> it's We're a- all presenting movies or shows that n- no one else has seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I've got one that I watched for the first time that I assume you guys have seen. We watched Boogie Nights the other night. Yeah, Boogie Nights rules. It's yeah. Pretty good. You Insanely like- long movie. Oh, I thought you were going to say insanely long something else because I thought you no. liked that last scene probably. No. no. <laughs> I closed my eye. Uh, well, at, at least one of you has been watching uh, Cobra Kai. Yes. Fan? Um, I, you know, no. I, I, I watch it and yeah. I actually enjoy it. It is, it's like Gilmore Girls with a little bit of like unrealistic karate. Like it's, it's really I bad. Joe likes Gilmore girls. That sounds like a show you would like. I don't know why you would say that about me. Honestly. I actually it, love it, Gilmore girls. It feels like it. Gilmore girls feels like a show that Joe would be like, you know what show I love Gilmore girls. <laughs> that, That's I, how Joe talks though. No, I don't talk like that. And I wouldn't say anything like that. No. But Gilmore girls actually isn't bad. It's, it's, Just, it's not like, bad. Every movie that Joe has ever talked about, he, the, him liking as a kid, in my mind, it's just all legally blonde. It's all like these weird, like <laughs> teen dramas, like, like <laughs> these like weird, like teen dramas. And I'm always like, "Where's the like Ninja Turtles or something?" He's like, uh, "You know, she's she's uh, she's all that." That's my favorite movie when I was five. Well, I'll also like to mention that you put Friday Night Lights above The Sopranos. Disgusting. Not above the never above the Sopranos. No. The year on record. <laughs> I think you said you would uh, put it above the Sopranos. I don't I know. Somebody's got to check the ta- tape on that one. That sounds like something I would say in an effort to sound interesting, but not uh, really mean it. Just saying like I was joking. I was joking about that. Uh, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just joshing around. Yeah, yeah. It was a joke. Uh hmm. but Cobra Kai, not good, uh, but very, very addictive. And I watchable. Watching. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually sent a picture to the group alluding to the fact that I was watching it, but I don't think it landed with either of you. Oh, uh, did you? I don't think I got it, but I mean, it is, I watched the first season and it's very rare that a show will hold my attention for more than 20 minutes. And I like pretty much binge that. Yeah. I, I mean, know. I was rocking a headband and uh, drinking a Coors banquet. I thought that would kind of point to what I was up to. Is that why it's good? Cause the uh, main dude rules. It's. I think that's one of the funniest things about it to me is I've never seen anyone in my life drink Coors Banquet and he's just crushing them constantly. And every scene where it's like something really great happens or something really shitty happens, you know the very next scene is just going to be him at home crushing Coors Banquets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obviously product placement. Um, nobody has an allegiance to a certain beer like that. That's it's, Coors Banquet. Like, I'll, give it up for, I'll give it up for Natty Light. Like yeah. shit, you can. I I would be fine being attached to Natty Light. I would never be okay being attached to Coors Banquet beers. I don't know that I've ever had them. It's so funny because it's like Coors Light sucks. Why would I want the full one of the worst version? Yeah, I think the best cheap beer is uh, Keystone. Ooh, that's a. Uh, you put that in the same tier as like Natty Light or like uh yeah like college beers like okay it, it would I would say like that's like your bottom tier and then the next step up is like a High Life because a High Life isn't quite at like Natty and Keystone level. I really like a High Life. It's my, it's my all time favorite beer. It <laughs> I drink more High Life than than water. <laughs> that's not good for you. That's not good. <laughs> Leaving Las Vegas, by the way, it's it it's a dude's rock movie. You should probably check it out. It's this dude who gets fired um, from his production company or something. He's like a direct. He's in movies. Like he lives in L.A. Yeah. and uh, he's really depressed. And he decides to just go to uh, Las Vegas and drink himself to death, like with no intervention. And oh, then he meets. This... I know this movie. And doesn't he have like a? Uh... No, nah, never mind. No, nope, no. Nope. I'm thinking of Fear and Loathing. I'm looking it up. And uh, he 
he links up with this prostitute who's like, uh, it's Elizabeth Shue. She's gorgeous in this movie. And uh, they they have this weird bond, but he's like, you can't tell me to stop drinking. Like, I'm going to keep drinking. I'm killing myself. I'm just doing it slowly. Um, and it rules. Nick Cage rules. Elizabeth Shue was hot. And uh, the, so the guy was a screenwriter. I take that back. And he, I believe he committed suicide, like, after the after it wrapped he like killed himself because that was he was basing it off himself he's like this is exactly what i want to do and then he like killed himself <laughs> before the the movie made it to theaters so it's wrapped in like a certain mystique and it's it's what year is that movie i don't know i'd say 90s. i mean is it 90s though yeah yeah it's 90s because Actually... i've been i've been taking a dive into like middle 2000s movies and recently rewatched or no watched for the first time uh da vinci code some like real like uh um one of my like prestige level 2000s movies like uh national treasure i, I have oh, Nick yeah. cage on the brain apparently but i i kind of equate those two but uh da vinci code was cool i like a mystery movie my, i i don't need any other kind of movie than like a thriller mystery thriller yeah cuz you can watch it for an hour and a half and have your phone on the table, you know? Right. right. Yeah, that's one where, like, even if I'm not interested, I still want to know what happens, so I'll usually grind it out. Yeah. What about you, Keith? What you watching besides Cobra, Cobra Kai? Other than Cobra Kai, uh, I watched a documentary, uh, Air Guitar Nation. We talked about this before. Is it the Air Guitar Contest? Yeah. It's I've incredible. That. that sounds awesome. It's like, they, they take it, like, way too seriously and, like, are always, like, mastering their craft of air guitaring. Do you see what Columbo's doing right now? Yeah, baby. Yeah. What's he doing? He is summoning a beer in the rudest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an Arizona diet green tea I can't drink. You can't uh, have beers? Not for 30 days, buddy. It's not a tea's worth of banter. Is that part of your conversion stuff? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start referring to my di- my new f- diet plan as c- my conversion therapy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Air Guitar Nation, very funny. Would suggest to watch. Um, do you want to get into my segments here? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they both involve uh, both of you. Ooh. Okay. So my uh, well, it would have been what a, what does Columbo think? But I guess I want both of your opinion. Uh, I'm so I've had this stance for some time, and I've never met anyone else who shares this stance, which tells me that. <laughs> Uh, everyone else is wrong. Yeah, it tells me that I'm right. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely how my brain works. It just definitely confirms that I'm right every time. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you got to present it to my podcast buddies here. Um, I don't care if it's a you know five dollar catcher's mitt or a top of the line best steakhouse in the world. I'm putting a one on a steak, no matter what. Well, this is how you found yourself on the wrong side of these things. Yeah, yep. you're not you're not putting a one on a on a good stick. <sighs> no, I I don't know that I've ever even had it, frankly. What? You've never had a one sauce? I don't think so. What? Col- Colombo only has great steaks. He's never had a shitty steak well, at a diner. Buddy, let me tell you what. I had some fantastic steaks over Christmas, and they were <laughs> really nice. Um, what, what kind? Uh, these were some Snake River Farms a a five. Uh, Wagyu New York strips. Jiminy Christmas! Did you prepare those? I did, and they was tremendous. What what kind of method did you use? There sounds like an assault rifle. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> does sound like assault rifle. Um, just straight on. A, I have my parents have one of those Blackstone like griddles. Have you seen these things? Yeah, it's like basically just like a big ass like cast iron pan. Yeah, uh, on wheels, and I just used that salt, pepper, seared them off, put the little temperature probe in that bad boy, wait till it hit about one twenty five. Okay, I don't, I don't care anymore. Um, listen, I a one. I don't eat it on good steaks only because of peer pressure. I will be. I'll give that up right now. I think that it would enhance I, pretty much any steak. That's I will been say my that, theory all along, is that somebody that, was shamed for it at some point in their life and just decided, oh, we don't do that? Yes. Yeah. 
it, it probably tastes objectively good because I'm a big ketchup guy, and ketchup basically masks the flavor of whatever you put it on. And a a one's better than ketchup, is it? You it's like a I mixture mean, of like ketchup and barbecue sauce, isn't it? It's more like it's more vinegary than that, I think. Interesting. It doesn't have the consistency of ketchup at all. No. It's like oil, vinegar, and like sodium, I feel like. Interesting. Yeah, but I mean, you go to a, like a nice steakhouse, and yeah, like, I guess May one, and they're like, oh, hey man, like this is a nice steakhouse. You oh, know? yeah, I would never, I would never do that. I would <laughs> just like, all right, well, it's a good steak. I would like to pair it with a good sauce, please. <laughs> <laughs> Your finest day one on the table, sir, please. Um, I will say this, though. Sure. I, to, 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 that, to that end, I am not a steak elitist. I like, I think a cheap steak, it, if obviously cooked well, is still very good. Like, I think Texas Roadhouse makes a kick-ass steak. Agree. I haven't had I, one for a while. I want to talk I, about it. Oh, I really want you to try A1. It bothers me that you've never had it. You're like menge with a shrimp. <laughs> The shrimp. I've never had shrimp. Um, hey, okay, so I'm on board, Keith. Actually, you helped me a lot to come to the realization that I'd rather buy a cheaper steak and put A1 on it than buy a better steak and not have A1. Sure, yeah. And then it's just such a weird thing to like, hey, you don't do that here. Like I'm like, you know, uncultured barbarian for one, <laughs> a delicious sauce on a delicious steak. It's well, ridiculous. You mentioned you mentioned uh, uh, you, you looking for this. You mentioned earlier that you think people are just pretending. Um, I feel that way about lobster. I think it's good, but I feel like people are pretending that it is like a deserve it of a like fifty dollar plus price tag. Oh, they lobster, jack it up way too much. Lobster it's is just crazy. a de- delivery vehicle for butter. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Crab, crab meat, like crab legs, objectively tastier. And like kind of the French fry of the seafood world. I don't think I've ever had crab legs, man. What? Oh, man. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've never had. I had lobster for the first time last year. Are you kidding me? No. No. I've had like crab, crab legs meat. Rock. I, I enjoy doing it. Mm, it seems like a lot. I think I'm just intimidated by it. It's so if, if you can't do it, not you, just if you're if a person is incapable of that, they have bigger problems than crab legs. No. Huh. Uh, let's see. Next up here. Settle this. Is it real or is it bullshit? Uh, I saw some videos recently uh, revolving around uh, hypnosis. What do we think? <laughs> I, I'm well, firmly in the it, camp that it's bullshit. I don't know. That's a good one. That's a that's a good question, man. Because like, I would... I, while I say it's bullshit and I don't think it's real, if like a hypnotist person was like, "Well, I'll hypnotize you," I'd be a little apprehensive. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, just, that's true. Just just sitting there, like up until that moment, you've been so you've been so secure in the in the ground that you're standing on about hypnosis. You're like, this is BS. There's no way. And somebody sits you down, and you're like, let me hip, let me hypnotize you. Just right. thought of being like, oh, wait a minute, shit. wait a minute. <laughs> oh, because it's like when you watch these videos, it's just like, okay, okay, okay. You're calm. You're calm. You're calm. Boom. They snap their fingers, and you're just like passed out, and they like make you act like a fucking puppet. There's no I've fucking always, way, man. No way. I, I, I would love to have it done to me. Calling all hypnotists. If well, you think I, you can do it. I think there's a difference between like a stage hypnotist, which I think is complete bullshit. Like no one's going to hypnotize you in uh, two minutes and then make you bark like a dog. I don't think that's real. I don't like, think that's real. Let me be clear. I don't think it's real. If they plucked you from the crowd, would you partake? Absolutely. I'd run up there. You would. Hans? I don't think so. Oh man! I don't want to. I don't want to bark like a dog, dude. <laughs> well, how do you feel about like? I mean, this is not on the same level. It's a little bit deeper than that. But like the psychic stuff, like any of that shit, any any faith that that is even remotely sh- real. Honestly, I kind of put it in the same basket. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hypnosis has been proven to be like 
somewhat effective over a long period of time, like in therapy, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think like, I think there's like a, just a common misnomer about hypnosis that you like put the clock in front of. So it's more of like, it's, it's, it's like, like meditation. Pounding, yeah. It's like pounding it in your head. Like right, people right. who use it to like quit smoking or something. Right. Right. It's, yep. that's a little different. I don't think stage hypnotists are like, uh, the palm readers or whatever on the psychic level are legitimate. But I also, this is like holding on to a belief in Santa Claus. I feel like, but I think there are, there could be, I open myself up to the, to do the idea that there could be forces in the world that we don't completely comprehend. One of my all time favorite quotes. So uh, deep. I, I used to, yeah, I, I used to, uh, remember when I told you guys I used to work for the radio station, they made me dress up like a bear, all that. <laughs> yes. Well, one, one of the things that I did frequently, well, every Wednesday, was I was the DJ slash equipment setter upper for Working Women's Wednesday at this sports bar <laughs> uh, in uh, like a, you know, BS West Virginia town. And uh, they would have like entertainment at these working women's Wednesdays. And one of the th- times the entertainment was a psychic. They brought in a psychic, which okay. I mean, you want to talk about, I mean, you're basically tormenting these poor women, right? I mean, you're going to a working women's Wednesday and now you're going to trick them into like that. Everything's going to be okay. I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, Wait, are these women depressed? I thought it was like a singles night. Well, I mean like I, the, the, I mean, I think that's the intent, but the functional, the functional reality of it is, is it's just kind of like a, kind of a sad sight. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. It's just what a bunch of really working desperate... women mean, like just like single it, and a... over 40. Yeah, basically. Okay. I mean, and if you're, if you're, you know, in that particular town, that's a, you know, not exactly the strongest dating pool you could go swimming in. But, uh, the lady walks up to me and she goes, hold on. Hey, Enzo, get out of the trash. Um, she walks up to me and she goes, taps me on the shoulder and she says, uh, she points at the lady who was doing the psychic card readings in the back and she goes, oh my God, is that a real psychic? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. I, what did she tell I you? Fucking I know. <laughs> it could be. I yeah, Listen, be. <laughs> keep them at arm's length is all I'm saying. You should be wary around them. Uh, is that, oh my God, is that a real psychic? <laughs> Are we in the presence of? <laughs> yeah, right. Damn. I don't think, we're not going to reach consensus here. I don't think. I'm I'm scared of them, and I don't, I think they're frauds as well, but, you know, you can never be too careful. Yeah, it seems we're on the same page. It's, it seems to be bullshit, but if it was, you know, if I had the opportunity, it'd be a little apprehensive. I, I would love to have, just be a participant in like a magic show. Um, I would, I would very much enjoy that. I'd be hypnotized. I'd let them like chop me in half, do whatever. That makes me think of, uh, I think you should leave when the magician oh, yeah. ruined his life. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a, uh, my buddy had forwarded this quote along to me, but he, I, he read some interview with Tim Robinson and he said like the whole inspiration for the show was like, or that his version of comedy was taking an extremely low stakes situation and making it as high stakes as humanly possible. Yeah. And, which is exactly what all of those things are, but that's like the most articulate uh, way I've heard it. Reference. Yeah. And I love specifically that sketch. I, yeah, I think another good, and if, if you haven't, you should watch this to our listeners. I think you should leave on Netflix. The best sketch comedy I've seen in the last 10 years. Since, since Tim, since Tim and Eric, Probably my most highly recommended sketch comedy. It, it's in recent it's history. Insanely yeah. funny. It's very it's funny. Insanely funny. Some don't hit, but like not on a level that like if an SNL skit isn't funny, it is hard to watch. It's yeah. it's physically painful. And Tim Robinsons are like, okay, I don't find those funny, but it's all right. But, I made ten times as much as you. <laughs> Good job, um, us. Oh man, I forget what I was gonna say about that show oh the the other great uh uh description of that show that i've heard of is uh, it's called straight man betrayal so you expect basically someone to be the straight man in each sketch and each time like they betray you by not being that you know what i mean like they they oh. up the insanity 
it is i could spend like an entire hour and often oh do with God. friends just reca recounting every moment of every sketch and it's one of the things where like you rewatch it and certain things are funnier to you the second time it's like a good album like how when you <laughs> find a good album every song on the album spends like a week as your favorite song on the album and, like, <laughs> yeah very true and every every like ske sketch on that show has spent like some time as the one that if you would have asked me at the time i would have told you was my favorite yeah hot dog sketch is everybody's favorite first i, I would think yeah but there's some yeah. good sleepers in there dinner that party is my appreciate uh, the the one, one that's really the one that's really grown on me in over time has become the uh patty harrison the Santa brought us. A... <laughs> it's just, it's so, the whole thing is so weird. Yeah. It, like, you, it's, it's, it's hypnotizing to like watch it. Like, the line delivery is so strange. It somehow avoids being like LOL so random, though. It, it really does. That's, I mean, I love that show. Mine is nothing has needed a season. Nothing has made, needed a season two more than that. True. Gaspacho yep. is my favorite. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm I'm friends with a guy on Facebook who I don't know. I think he friend requested me like after he came to like one of our one of my band shows, and he is that guy. He is is it uh not Teddy um it's like Stevie Howie, 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 Howie yeah <laughs> he is Howie. It's insane. It's like a, he's doing a parody of him. It, um, I think I like it so much because I can I can feel when I go into Howie territory, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Into Howie yeah. territory. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I dip my toe in that water frequently. And, and when you catch yourself, it sucks. Oh, yeah. Feels bad. Uh, you want to open the six-pack? Columbo, was this your idea? It was actually Joe's. I was just a big fan of it. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, so six-pack this week. Hopefully, <laughs> this is kind of a, an odd time to do this. Uh, because... I think it's the perfect time. Okay, so we'll stick with that, but we're going to go a uh, six-pack of top six conspiracy theories. I I told the guys before I was going to keep mine pretty lighthearted um, <laughs> in light of, you know, all the fucking shit going on right now. Um, my first one, it's not so much a conspiracy th theory as it is a, um, a religious belief that I find to be very funny, but Mormons think that there's an actual Garden of Eden, and it's in Jackson County, Missouri. <laughs> I did not know that. Why do they think it's there? I don't know, dude. Like, Mormons are crazy. Mormons, that is such an insane religion. Well, you know, not, and not to go down this route, but, like, it's so deceivingly... Like, I was watching this uh, stupid show on Netflix um, that my girlfriend and I, like, hate-watched. It's like an interior design show. And, like, the... The couple, it's like a, a husband and wife that like do interior design or something, and they're Mormon, but like they they present as like extremely clean cut, extremely normal, like yeah. to the point where it, it like wades into the uncanny valley territory. Yeah, and but then you then you like will sometimes pause and think about what these people think, like what they believe the real world is, and you're like, oh my god, they are these people are crazy. I mean. You got some wild ass beliefs. Yeah, truly insane. I mean, I don't know how you can operate normally and think the things that they do. And they do very well. Yeah, no, they blend in perfect. Like it's art. It's honestly their uh, biggest argument, most uh, encouraging argument for the whole aliens thing that they blend in so well. Oh, okay. Is that one of your conspiracy theories? Are you segueing no. here? No, no. One okay. of my favorite, one of my favorite conspiracy theories, and there's actually a lot of material online because it it is you could not come up with a more inconsequential conspiracy and that conspiracy is that uh yao ming is eight feet tall <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of like these like infographics floating around the internet like of him with pictures of people and they're like doing the forensics of well this person is this much and by the picture you can tell that he's appears to be x amount of inches taller than him and there's a lot of people around the earth that think that Yao Ming is actually eight feet tall, but that for some reason, you know, we're just not allowed to know about. It. <laughs> they just took like four inches off, like because he's yeah, actually yeah. like seven eight, right? So <laughs> seven 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 or seven eight, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that's hilarious! Eight, what? But, but keep that on the but, low. 
but I heard one of my one of my buddies brought it up to me, and my initial reaction was, "Who cares?" <laughs> like, what? I mean, I guess Who it would be a, a nice little factoid that this guy's eight feet tall. But ultimately, what does that do for you? I love the dude beating on the table saying Yao Ming's eight foot tall <laughs> instead of seven foot eight. Yeah, right. Like, like he's already not a freak of nature. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you, I like that one. Well, that segues into mine because for, for some reason I have uh, two NBA ones that I liked a lot. Uh, the one being that uh, Manute Ball was in the NBA when he was like 55 years old. Uh, just... <laughs> based on the tribal notches on his head because they didn't have a birth certificate for him. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what we're telling you that? Yeah, he, uh, he like, didn't know his own age, right? Yeah, they like, you didn't have a birth certificate and they're like, hey, what's up with all these like scars on your head? And he's like, well, I don't know how old I am, so every five years I just make like a notch in my head with a rock and what's his face on his team was just like kind of... Okay, well then you're 55. <laughs> he was like on a roster at the time. <laughs> uh, okay, might as well knock down my other basketball one then. Uh, the have you heard the the frozen envelope that one with the Knicks? Oh yeah, Patrick I, yeah. What cause my favorite thing about that is if it's not true, who the fuck came up with that theory? I bet Ex- they just put that envelope Ex- in a freezer. Explain it for the people who may not be uh, uh, in the know. Well, basically, the NBA draft lottery, um, it was a conspiracy that the Knicks froze or put the envelope like in a freezer for a while. And when they set it out, um, you could feel like the cold one. And that's how the Knicks ended up getting Patrick Ewing. Right. Like 1986 or something like that, right? Something like that, yeah. Why is... Why is that the year and the person? Because I saw the same thing actually a long time ago. Why is that the year and the person? Because you could do that any year, right? It's just such an outrageous thing to make up if it's not true. Like you know what I bet? I, I bet they did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I bet they did? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's mine. Okay, my next one is. Uh, You've never seen the back of the White House because it's just a facade and the real one is across the street. <laughs> it's just Is stupid. that a real one? Yeah, no, like I think people actually believe that. They think the White House is like just for show and they do tours there and shit. That's like uh there's two Mount Rushmores, one in Canada that they used as practice for the first one. I never heard that one. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how these conspiracy theories fucking start with shit like this, and yeah. then you say that, and then people go looking for the Canadian Mount Rushmore. Could get some traction, <laughs> Columbo. All right, yeah. So, so my next one, this one is I don't know if this is a widely held one, but I heard it from a guy one time, and uh, it it just made me laugh. I was thinking about it on my way home today. This guy was my homeroom teacher in high school, and uh, not that it would ever matter, but I, I can't remember his name. Um, but he was like really a, a, a nice guy, but a very strange guy. He, did you guys have teachers at your high school that just taught nothing? Basically, we had, we had a teacher who taught religion and would speak in tongues sometimes. So I didn't go to a Catholic, you guys went to a Catholic high school, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I went to like Catholic, like elementary school and stuff, but this was the public high school in Morgantown. And this guy taught like, I think, you know, like the kids with like, behavioral disorders or whatever, but that's only like one period a day. His whole job was homeroom teacher and uh, kind of a hippie guy. And one day he like was talking to me about like some of his like beliefs. And he had this big conspiracy about how the deodorant companies um, make it so that your, the the deodorant actually makes you stink more. So you have to use it. uh, You know, using deodorant is actually going to make you stink more. So he didn't use it. So you just buy more deodorant? Yeah, basically. Hey, let me fill you in on a little piece of information, too. This guy stunk. Stunk. (laughs) But he wasn't falling for it. (laughs) He's a free spirit. (laughs) He may have stunk, but he he was going to stink for the right reasons. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, but this guy stunk. I love that one, though. 
<laughs> he doesn't believe in toothpaste either. Yeah, right. Keith. Um, well, I'll go for some low-hanging fruit here first. Uh, the Flat Earthers, of course. Um, have you seen the documentary about them? Yeah, I watched that on the plane, and it's the probably the most enjoyable plane viewing I've ever seen. It's just so, like... I, I laughed mean, out loud. They're either, like, on the spectrum or just, like, looking for a buddy. Like, it doesn't give any credence to, like, the theory itself, I guess. It's just, like, focused on the people who think that. Yeah, and the dude, the main dude who's kind of the leader or the original leader of all these people seems yeah. so smart and, like, legit. Did you get that? Or am I... Maybe I'm a, I'm a sap. I'm trying to think back on, on the characters in it because that was really all that I took away with it was just, like... What, what documentary is this? Conventions Fla or whatever. It just seemed Earthers. like they were happy to, like, hang out with somebody. Yeah, I... And that's what... I'm, I assume most Flat Earthers are like that. But the, the main dude, like, the father of the whole thing just seemed like a normal guy, which is kind of what threw me for a loop. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it, though. Do you? Um, no, I don't. And then they, they basically disproved it at the end of the movie using one of their own experiments. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of like a, I don't know, Bill Maher spin. Like, uh, here's these freaks and here's why they're dumb. And it's just like, all right. I didn't see that as necessary. Just focus on like the community itself, I guess. Oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was so funny. Cause people, the... people want to own the flat earthers. Right. You shouldn't do that. It, it, like with anti-vaxxers too, it's kind of the same now, thing. Now it's like I've confirmed that you, this is what you're talking about. This was on my list as well. Because it's like the quintessential conspiracy theory. It's it's And it's also almost as inconsequential as Yao Ming being eight feet tall. <laughs> no it's not, it's not as inconsequential as that that would totally change the way we view the world and physics and how we move around right if it was if it was real like there's I a lot that, more yeah that's that's true there's yeah. a lot more at stake here because that means everybody in the world is bit, or like you know all major scientists are kind of lying to you but i think 80 percent of flat earthers are just kind of trolling but there's definitely some people who actually think it's true for some reason on to me. Yep. Okay, so um, the only things that I, the only books I read anymore is kind of like world history. Um, I like uh, like military history too. And I saw on some forum, I don't know if it was Reddit or something, something similar. Um, it was like an alternative view of world history. And the way this dude pitched it, I was like, oh yeah, I'll check that out. And it was a a book by Graham Hancock, who's decently famous, I guess, as an author. Um, he wrote this book called Fingerprints of the Gods, and uh, I got it because I was told it was about world history. It's like 800 fucking pages, and like <laughs> I didn't really read any reviews about it. I, it was one of those weird things. I saw it on a forum, I'm like that sounds interesting. Amazon auto buy, and then I got it. And like just slowly reading through the chapters, I realized that he was like pitching this idea that. You know, civilization has been around for basically like 4,000 years as kind of as we know it today, right? Civilization, not human beings. Right. And this book basically posited very slowly as I put the pieces together that basically civilization has been around for millions of years and gone through like many, many extinction events. And that like a lot of the modern monuments like Machu Picchu, um, are basically warnings from older civilizations about when and how these extin extinction events take place. And it was so funny to like, oh, be no. yeah, I, yeah, I know. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm reading this book, like very interested because it's very dense with history and like artifacts and old, you know, old, uh, like geological sites and stuff like that. I'm like, all this shit makes sense. <laughs> and I just like could feel myself getting indoctrinated and then finally, like, I start putting the pieces together. I'm like, oh, he's saying, like, like aliens visited us millions of years ago and, like, told us what to do. And now there's been a bunch of extinction events. I'm like, oh, shit, I should stop it, reading. It's very, it's very funny to me, like, kind of the uh, aspersions people cast at, like, the ancient aliens type conspiracy people. Yeah. Because when you think about what it is you're actually trying to, the code you're actually trying to crack, that's like... That it 
other than other than like divine inter- like the the alien thing is like stop number two like it's not that insane we're trying to figure out like how the fuck we got here and and these people sure. were like yeah maybe it's like somebody else a, a convincing like, person can make you fall into it pretty quick yes oh yeah absolutely absolutely because like i said it's it's like for whatever the actual answer is if you were trying to posit what the the you know answer to the question was I mean that's only like choice B, C, or D. Maybe it's not that far off the beaten path. It is not any less realistic than like Yahweh created us. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, yeah. It's there's there's really a far not. better chance of that than that Yao Ming's eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My, my next one is a. I mean, it's it's a conspiracy in as much as I think people are aware that it happens i just don't know that people this is a personal one um take it to the if the extreme that i do and that it is i basically think that all sporting events in the history of sports are rigged since since sports betting became a thing i think that i could be convinced like if a news came out tomorrow that every single sporting event in every sport every game was rigged and fixed, I would be like, oh yeah, well of course. Like it would, it would not rock my world at all. I'm that convinced of it. And I think that like fluke games, things like you know bad upsets, are intentionally planted as you know kind of like your control group, hey, like, just to make it not too obvious. Hmm. I believe that for most Browns losses. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the Bengals have lost a lot of games recently. It does seem a bit fishy. <laughs> I do believe that for uh, boxing, though. I think that's what killed boxing. Yeah, because you only have to get to one person in boxing in an individual sport, right? Let, and, let me say this: I should say that all major sports. I think like football, college football, college college football, NFL football, college basketball, pro basketball, and then boxing for sure, and then probably in different parts of the world, soccer. Most people here don't care enough about it. I would say that, like, the fix is in on on virtually all that shit. Via what mechanism? Do you think it's, like, re- refereeing mostly, or, like, they can... The mob. Uh, I think it's the mob. I but think that's have- uh, what got to boxing. And it was one of those things where, whether it was true or not, to hear that maybe the fights are actually fixed takes away from the enjoyment of boxing. Well, entirely. it's like they say, the truth is a defense, pal. You know yeah. what I mean? As, as well, soon as as soon as you pause, as soon as you put the thing out there, and then there's some evidence of it, people are convinced. Well, point shaving was proven in the NBA. Yeah, that Donahue guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it does happen. I don't think it's as rampant as you would have our listeners believe you're kind of spreading some misinformation here. And I'm not sure that, uh, the beers worth podcast stands for that. (laughs) We we, we would never. (laughs) Okay. On to you, Keith. Uh, I had, you could probably wrap a couple into this one. I had any kind of, uh, like creature chaser, Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster. Um, one thing, well, one thing I love was, uh, the show finding Bigfoot, (laughs) It was oh, a pretty yeah. bold title for a show considering they don't find him. Every <laughs> every uh every uh like commercial bump they do for that show where they zoom in on that guy's face in the night vision. Yeah. Just, squ- or just watching these woods. <laughs> just it, watching like eighteen episodes in season every, one. And- <laughs> every episode was like in the same resolution and the same like light as like uh on viva la bam when they'd sneak into phil and april's room and like slap phil <laughs> it was like all that kind of like pseudo su- yeah. like pseudo night vision like it's not it's just like the night vision that comes on like a handy cam or whatever one of my favorite quotes from the show when i, I would tune in was uh the the, the main guy who's like oh, i've de- dedicated you know 20 years of my life to finding bigfoot or whatever he wears that uh gone squatching shirt yeah and uh he so they get a tip from a guy who's like, you know, I think there's one like in my woods. So they go see him and he's like kind of describing it. And the guy's just so dead serious. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and did you see him? No. <laughs> and then he goes into this whole tirade about like the fact that you didn't see him just actually kind of confirms that it was a Sasquatch because 
<laughs> oftentimes uh, you don't see them. <laughs> He just used not finding it as proof that that's what it was. <laughs> oh man, the X that rules. Yeah, yeah. But, I love that. Here's a question: So that for every you know beast like that, uh, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, uh, Loch Ness monster, is there a community of like abominable snowmen chasers? A Yeti? They think they exist. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yetis, chupacabras, Native chupacabras, Americans. That's another good one. Yeah, Native American skinwalkers are like you should look that up. Those are terrifying. Skinwalker Ranch, baby. I don't know what that is. It's a documentary. Okay. It, wait, is it about that? Yeah. Oh, is it spooky? Uh, I haven't watched it all the way through. Okay. Well, I might have to watch that. That sounds pretty cool. But I think there's like an extra mysticism when it comes with like uh, Native Americans or like indigenous people. Same with like Irish folklore. Like there's yeah. some creepy like uh uh what like rural legends there that are kind of cool but it's all the same fucking shit yeah chupacabra is real though i believe in chupacabra same okay my next one is um you know i wanted to stay away from the alt-right theories here but this one's just too good um the obamas had joan rivers killed because she joked about barack being um gay and michelle being a man (laughs) <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> you think they're on? Oh one? man, yeah. I, Joe. <laughs> well, I mean, I was like, this is ridiculous because I've heard the like, it's like a meme, you know, like Michael Obama, like Michelle Obama being a yeah, like yeah. being born a man. Um, and then I went to <laughs> when I thought of this one, I was like, oh, I should see like you know the. Uh, they're they're proofs for this this idea here and every single youtube video i went to had been taken down so cover up i don't know you you tell me michael obama sounds like proof via absence of proof to me yeah and alex jones (laughs) if i've learned anything from finding sasquatch (laughs) (laughs) and alex jones actually caught wind of that one and uh god he's an american treasure yeah yeah, and he so he talked about that a long time ago. I I didn't know that before. I, I that got brought up in my research today. But yeah, there you go. All right. Well, if we're gonna like do politics adjacent uh, stuff, then I've always been a huge fan of the like uh, lizard people thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that one too. Again, it it's a little bit like the frozen envelope, kind of the you know what I bet it is. Like somebody who just says it so casually. So are we putting like, I mean, are like Scientologists, is that a conspiracy theory? I have a, I have a conspiracy theory that David Miscavige can catch these hands. Uh, <laughs> and only because, have you ever watched these Scientology documentaries? They act like this guy who is literally the size of my microphone here. He's five foot one. He's insanely short. And, uh, like, they act like he can, like, literally do anything to them. And he does nothing to them. (laughs) You hear these people describe, like, the atrocities they've been through. And then they'll, like, the camera will zoom in on their face and the music will quiet. And then it'll be like, he yelled at me. That that'll be like the extent of it's just it's such. Well, they they collect dirt on them. They like through the indoctrination process. They say like you know to tell us your deepest darkest secrets basically. And these people are so dumb that they're like, yeah, I fucked a hobo under the bridge, and that man was John Travolta. You know, and they're people are like, okay, well now we have the dossier on you, so you better not fuck up. Yeah. Or whatever. What were you going to say? I don't think you finished with the lizard people thing. I just thought it's always been like, uh, it's it's one of these things where, like, I think, especially people who are as online as we are, like, if you said that to your grandparents, they'd be like, what? Like, they'd think you were insane. Yeah. It's such a now conspiracy. But anyways, it's kind of a dumb thing. Uh, is it back to me? Because I'm out, actually. Okay, I have two more. Go. Uh, I'm out. This this one it could be said for a lot of celebrities, but the this celebrity is funny. Um, Avril Lavigne died and was repl- replaced by a body double. Yeah, I've heard I love this that one. Yeah. 
that one's very good. Also, um, and you you can look that look that up online and see like pictures side by side, like comparing freckles from like 2003 to 2006, and people saying definitively that it's a different person. Very funny. As if like celebrities don't get fucking <laughs> plastic surgery all the time. Um, also, Andrew WK in the same vein. Andrew WK has been replaced like six times over the yeah, years. Yeah, it's like it's somebody different all the time. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. And then I didn't know this one, but Eminem as well. I hadn't heard that one before I kind of went down this rabbit hole today. Well, he never takes off that uh, stupid like Fallout Boy hat. So, yeah. Or he's yeah. wearing a do-rag. <laughs> okay. So what's the conspiracy that he has a full head of hair? <laughs> Ooh, but it's uh, bleached. Okay, and then this this last one is just funny. I don't think anybody actually believes this, but it's uh, the idea that the Olsen, twin, Olsen twins are uh, only one person, but they're running back and forth really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That one's very funny to me. <laughs> Aligns with uh, a growing movement that thinks Amelia Earhart didn't crash, just got bored of flying. <laughs> brought her down yeah i uh i've i've one of the things and you kind of mentioned this earlier with the Av- avril Lavigne things but one of the one of my favorite if you want a good laugh like go into one of these crazy conspiracies like that and then look at exactly what these people are citing as like the definitive proof <laughs> and it's always invariably so stupid and so flimsy and so obvious to anybody who is not dying to believe it that it's <laughs> Not true. Like, and a, a lot of people are dying to believe it, man. They'll look at those two fucking photos side by side with the red circles on like Avril Lavigne's left nostril and be like, yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Um, all right. If you guys don't have anything you want to add, we'll file out here and watch this natty. All right, boys. All right, all we right. don't know anything, and neither do you. See you guys.